Although Plato didn't know about virtual reality headsets or what such a newfangled technology could evoke, he did understand better than most that humans do not see reality as it is, but rather how we filter it moment to moment. His famous Allegory of the Cave, which is arguably the single greatest thought experiment in the history of philosophy, explains, via the mouthpiece of Socrates, very simply that we are prisoners who confuse shadows on the wall, which are artificially manufactured by an unseen burning fire, as if they were real men and other living things. It is an illusion, and as such the imprisoned men are duped. Today, with the advent of ever-increasing scientific advances, we are on the threshold of better understanding why consciousness evolved and how it works. Professor Donald Hoffman, the controversial cognitive scientist at the University of Irvine, has taken Plato's allegory and given it a computational update by using the metaphor of a desktop computer where all we see is the user interface, not the underlying software programming or the hardware circuitry of electron exchanges. Accordingly, what we see, hear, smell, touch around us is a filtering mechanism developed by evolution to ensure that we focus on what will allow us to live long enough to pass on our genetic code. In the past century, we have come up with various models to understand consciousness, from Dennett's multiple drafts to Leary's eight circuits, to Dehan and Cheng Shou's global neuronal workspace, etc. Yet each have been hindered by their use of limited metaphors. This becomes much more apparent when the computational semblance of the mind faltered when neuroscientists and philosophers realized that awareness was not merely digital. However, with the advent of virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality, our models of how consciousness functions are becoming much clearer to grasp, since we now have the ability to simulate in four dimensions an all-encompassing environment artificially. Using VR and MR as touchstones allows us for the first time to better appreciate how our brains construct the world around us via incoming data streams. Consciousness is a forging mechanism, which by its attentional posturing enables it to fully immerse in a world of its own making, even as it remains mostly unaware of how such a magical performance occurs. Simply put, we live not in an objective cosmos distinct from our interactions with it, but rather in a rendered universe where our participation and our observations are fundamental to our interpretations of it. This becomes transparently obvious when we realize that the most sophisticated virtual reality headset known to exist is our own brain. However, by exploring manufactured VR accoutrements and the varied vistas that they can create, we have, perhaps for the first time in our history, the necessary tools to synthetically reconstruct how the brain perceives and interacts with reality. This essay is an examination of how the advent of virtual reality changes our understanding of human consciousness and how future researchers will benefit by employing its many iterations. The Virtual Brain Brian Greene, the physicist polymath at Columbia University, recently made a Paris observation about why human beings cannot visualize the quantum world or extraordinarily large timescales. Our bodies evolved to a middle-range environment where what was vital for our evolutionary survival was dependent on resources within a certain physical parameter. Because of this Darwinian dictum of eat or be eaten, our brains didn't develop the capacity to truly envision what ten dimensions may be like or what occurs at the level of a photon or nanotime durations, or what was before the Big Bang, etc. Yes, we can imagine and we can speculate, but even here we have limited models with which to work. Yet Green went on to speculate that with the advent of virtual and augmented reality intertwined with artificial intelligence, it may be possible in the future for humans to stretch their cognitive abilities in ways unimaginable before the emergence of such technologies. 
Elon Musk's championing of neural lace slash link is but a stepping stone for a wholly different way of thinking and being. It may well be that the very reason we have yet to see a major breakthrough in the study of human consciousness is precisely due to our present cranial limitations. Just as the field of astronomy achieved greater success with building better and more refined telescopes, and molecular biology blossomed with more powerful microscopes, the study of the brain and awareness necessitates radically new tools. Our future devices and instrumentations need to go far beyond electroencephalography, EEG, positron emission tomography, PET, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, and functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI. The immense complexity of the brain with its 86 billion or so neurons curled up in a compacted mound of gray matter weighing just three pounds cannot be approached, much less comprehensively understood with crude instrumentation. Given that our technologies must evolve to properly inspect such an intricate compound, so too must our own mental maps, lest we be too inadequate to grapple with nature's greatest secret. This is why I believe that virtual and augmented reality is a dramatic stride in the right direction. For example, last year I attended the Oculus Connect conference held in San Jose which highlights the latest developments in virtual reality hardware and software. One of the keynote speakers was the video gaming pioneer, John Carmack, who pointed out two of the most important and fundamental hard problems in getting virtual reality to work seamlessly, spot-on rendering and time-corrected latency. First, when you don a VR headset, such as the standalone Oculus Quest, or HTC Vive's Cosmos Play, wherever you look, the scene becomes clearer by a process technically known as foveated rendering, which uses an eye tracker integrated with whatever headset you may be using that is specially designed to reduce the rendering workload, systematically compressing the visual field in the peripheral vision outside of the zone gazed by the fovea. Some headsets use a less sophisticated variant called fixed foveated rendering which doesn't utilize eye tracking and instead assumes a fixed focal point. John Carmack and Michael Abrash, chief scientists for Oculus at Facebook, who also spoke at the Oculus 6 conference, argued that perfecting rendering is the key to making virtual reality almost indistinguishable from our regular, everyday sense of reality. What is most intriguing about this in relation to our own particular form of attention is how our brain is literally a rendering machine, which provides us with only a small smattering of information via our senses whenever we pay attention to a particular occurrence or scene. We don't ever see objects or persons or events in their totality, but merely the tiniest of data slivers which are evolutionarily filtered for our survival and not necessarily for us to better understand the cosmos at large. Yet, we remain oblivious of how such neural rendering works and how it delimits the world we inhabit. In a very real sense, we are born wearing the universe's most sophisticated VR headset and live as if we aren't aware of this requisite fact. Understanding the mechanics behind VR rendering and its various permutations is undoubtedly helpful in better appreciating how our own brains render reality via our five senses. It may seem odd to realize that the universe we behold is versional and not a clear transparency of what is.